In this video, we're going to take a look at angles and how they are measured. Now, angles are usually measured in standard position. So this means that the angle has a vertex on the origin and the initial arm on the positive x-axis. So on this diagram, the vertex would be located right here at the origin. And then the initial arm would start here where the positive x-axis is. So since we're creating an angle, let's say that the angle was this angle here. Now we always start angles measured from the initial arm and then we rotate. Now if the rotation is counterclockwise, then the angle is set to be positive. Now where the angle ends, this arm is called the terminal arm. Now if the angle is measured in the counterclockwise direction, then the angle is negative. So angles can be measured counterclockwise and also clockwise in this direction. Now, in my other two grids, what I want to do is just kind of outline the angles here. So if it starts over here, we would say the angle is zero degrees. And then as it rotates counterclockwise, this would be 90 degrees. This would be 180 degrees halfway around. Three quarters of the way around is 270. And then when we go all the way back to our beginning, that's 370, 60 degrees. Now, we can also rotate the other way. So this is, this is starting here at the initial arm. This would be zero. At the bottom, that would be negative 90. Then we have negative 180. Back to the top, we have negative 270. And then all the way back to the beginning, we would then have negative 360 degrees. Now, I want to teach you a new measure and we'll fill in the last grid afterwards. Now, when we label our grids, we talk about the quadrants. So this will be quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three, and this will be quadrant four. Okay. So the new uh, measurement uh, for angles that you'll be learning this year is called the radian. So one radian um, is described as the measure of the central angle subtended in a circle formed by rotating the radius of the circle by an arc equal in length to the radius of the circle. Now this is a mouthful. So what does it mean to be subtended? So it just means that when we have an angle and it's measured from the center of the circle, so let's say we have the central angle here. Subtended means that it kind of opens out to or extends to um, that arc on the circle. So the central angle subtends, uh, is subtended in a circle and it's formed by rotating the radius. So this is the radius. And we're gonna rotate such that this length on the arc is equal in length to the radius. So this is all R right here like this. And then our angle here would be called theta. So this is what it means to be one radian. So since theta is equal to one radian, and I can abbreviate radian with RAD. Now, we also know that 360 degrees, that means all the way around, would give us two times pi. Since the circumference of the circle is two pi r. Okay. Now we're assuming this circle to be a radius of 1 here. So that 360 degrees is now equal to 2 pi. So if I divide both sides by 2, I can also say that 180 degrees is equal to pi. And these are all in radians. Now note, if an angle does not have a degree symbol, so notice that these ones have a degree, we're going to assume for the angles to be in a radians. So let's take a look at how to convert back and forth. So we're going to use the fact from up here that 2 pi 
is equal to 360 degrees. So therefore, we know that one degree, if I wanted to find out what one degree is, I'm gonna divide both sides by 360. I can see that would equal pi over 180 degrees. Or if I wanna figure out what one radian is, remember that this side is one radian because it doesn't have the degree symbol. So we would divide both sides by two pi so that one radian is equal to 180 over pi. Now I actually shouldn't have the degree symbol here, so I should take that away. Since this is gonna be one degree is pi 180, this will be in radians, and then one radian is equal to 180 pi, and that will be in degrees. Uh, let's take a look at an example. So draw each angle in standard position. Uh, I want you to practice by changing each degree measure to radian measure, or if it's in radians, I want you to change it to degree measure. Uh, give answers as both exact and approximate measures, if necessary, to the nearest hundredth of a unit. Okay, so if I have 35 degrees, and we know that one degree is equal to pi over 180, if I multiply this by pi over 180, then I'm gonna get 35 pi, oops, so get 35 pi over 180, and I can reduce top and bottom, the numerator down by five, so I get seven pi over 36. Now, I don't need to write the word radian, but in this case, let's write it just so that you will know that this is in radians. So 35 degrees, according to my graph from above, will be in the first quadrant. So I can put my angle here and say that this is 35 degrees. Now, in the second one, I have six pi divided by five. So because it doesn't have the degree symbol, we assume that this is gonna be in radians. So to convert it to degrees, I'm gonna times this by, since I know that one radian is 180 degree pi, if I times it by 180 degrees, pi, then I can see that these pi's will cancel off. 5 can go into 180 36 times, and then 6 times 3, 36 is 216 degrees. Now I've kind of used a convenient fact here. So knowing that this is in radians, and then this is 180 degrees over pi radians, I can see the radians would cancel off, kind of like what you do in chemistry when units cancel off. So just like over here, we can have the degrees cancel off. All right, so to draw this, uh, remember this is six pi over five. So what I'm gonna do, oh, and actually, you know, I forgot to draw our table, but I'll go back up there later. Actually, let's do that now. So we're gonna come back up here. So we know that this is gonna be zero radians. And I said over here that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So if I look at this graph over here, 180 degrees is here, so this must be pi. Now, if pi is all the way, halfway to the circle, a quarter all the way around would make this to be pi divided by two. So if every quarter is pi over two, this is pi over two, this would be two pi over two, then on the bottom, this would make this to be three pi over two, and then when we come back around, this would be four pi over two, which then is equal to two pi. Now again, we can go in the reverse clockwise direction, so this would be zero, and then here, this would be negative pi over two. This is negative pi. Going back up here, we have negative three pi over two, and then we then go all the way full circle to be negative two pi. The quadrants are labeled the same. This is quadrant one, oops, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. All right, so going back down here, um, so my value was six pi over five. So knowing that this is already pi, if I wanna convert it um, so the denominators are the same, it might make it easier for you to understand where to draw this. So this would be zero. Now because I want to know what six pi over five is, and I know that over here, halfway around, that's gonna be pi, I'm gonna label that as pi, 
but to make it even easier for me to understand this, I'm going to change the denominator so it's 5. So I want to make this to be 5 pi over 5. So given that this is 5 pi over 5, and I want to know where 6 pi over 5 is, it's just a little bit bigger than 6 pi over 5. So I'm going to put that angle over here, which means that this angle, plus a little bit, is going to be 6 pi divided by 5.